Welcome to another factory tour. This is Swarf and Chips. We've come right to the River Humber to Shipham's Valve. Now, I've been here before, Tom, but you've not. So if you want to find out anything about Shipham's, just ask me the question and I'll let you know. Well, what is this? Well, so this is these guys do uh, a wide range of uh, gate valves, butterfly valves, ball valves. They've been going since for 200 years, which is why they, I mean, these designs, it's amazing. They haven't really changed in, I don't know, in 50, 100 years. But the way they do, uh, the way they manufacture them has changed. Well, and they, they go from... Well, they don't just do this size, do no, they? No, they don't. I mean, they, they do absolutely <laughs> massive gate valves from these tiny little balls to these absolutely huge, I don't know, what is that like? Is that like 300 mil size or something? Yeah, Maybe even like bigger. Um, but these materials, this is, do you know what material this is? Is that Monet? No, this oh. is nickel. This is, well, no, I asked Paul about 20 minutes ago. It's nickel alley bronze. Now, this You're is. Done with that. Yeah, I know. I have, so this is, <laughs> this is a slightly easier to machine than the material over there. Now, well, there's. The price of that, just as it stands, without even being machined. Yeah, so these castings, obviously, they're, they're very huge, they're really high value. And what is really important is obviously this is not a finished product yet. You need to d add a lot more value to this with your machine. So you need to face this, make good valve seating, uh, good flange, flange ceiling faces on this side. You need to make some valve seating faces on the inside. The complicated operations, they're hard to get to. So you're going to be adding a lot of value to an already very expensive casting. But Nickel Alley Bronze is a little bit cheaper than what this is. Now, what material? Was that Monet? No, this, no. Is, this is, again, sorry, you're, you're trying hard, Tom. I, I've got to give you that. But <laughs> this is Hastaloy. Now, this is. This is a very expensive material. The price of materials obviously is going up across the board, but Hastelloy, very expensive. And there's not many places you can get that from either, is no, there? No, exactly. So Paul was saying that uh, the foundries that make the, uh, the manufacture, obviously, the, these big castings, there's not many in the UK. So these castings are very expensive already. But very some of them high value come parts. from close to us, though, don't they? They do, yeah. So these are from Sheffield, thankfully, where <laughs> we live, um, which is obviously a, a, great, uh, a great show for Sheffield. But we're going to go now into the machine shop where they obviously add huge value to these parts that have come in from the from the cast foundries well i put that one down and tried not to break it yeah how are you doing you feel you feel a bit pumped now <laughs> oh, on your bicep that right arm is uh, yeah brilliant yeah his right arm's a bit That's bigger it. than his Jim, left i don't, I don't want, done for the day i don't want to find out why <laughs> but let's go into the machine shop which they've been building up for uh since april last year it's amazing they had absolutely no machines uh in april last year and now we're going to have a quick look at their brand new biggest machine it's an hnk let's go and have a look and here we've got Paul, you're the head of operations of the, the machine shop here. Now, congratulations on bringing so many machines and engineering knowledge in such a short amount of time. But we don't want to talk about that just now. We'll talk about the HNK. So why did you buy this machine? Just the versatility of it, everything that it gives us, a uh, massive range of valves that we can do in, in our portfolio. Basically, globe swing checks, gate bodies, butterflies, everything can go on here. So, you know, a fantastic machine. Four, four pallets, seven and a half tonne of pallet. Uh, swings about 2.3 metres and we can turn about 1.4 metres in diameter. So are, there, are there any of your big parts that you can't make on this machine? Not at the moment, no, but you know, we're always looking to get into other markets and go through bigger products. So, you know, we, we are working up there. Okay, so you're always looking to find some bigger valves to make, but we've seen some pretty big ones right now. Um, let's hope we see some big ones next time we come around. Now, I'm sorry, Paul, we're going to have to keep going. Sorry, thank you for your time very much. Thank you so very let's much. keep moving on. And now we've come to the back of the machine where Darren, the operator, is running the big facing head, I think, for the flange seats on, the, on this valve body. And what I also love is it's not just the massive facing head they've got, which they need to manually take off and unbolt from the cam locks, is a massive boring bar from Sandvik they've got over there, which is it do, it's doing a 310 mil length bore. And I think it's something, I don't know what the diameter is, maybe 80 mil, 90 mil. Yeah, but what you've got to think of where that is, it's going so deep, but it's got to keep perfectly straight because they work into a, an 015 tolerance. So that's okay over 10 mil, but they're going 300 mil deep. So to keep that all the way through, you've got to have the right tooling for that. But as well as having the tooling, the parts also got to have the right fixture to keep it solid. Because it's all right having the right tooling, but if your part's not sat straight, absolutely, you're then, then you loose. can't make a good part, can you? But how would you? How do you think you would inspect it personally, Tom? They've got Renishaw programming. How would you inspect that? That, that bore, would you just go the top and the bottom or would you go top, middle, bottom? Oh, to be honest, I think if it were me, I'd be probing it everywhere just to try and make sure. Every 10 it's millimeters. absolutely spot on, especially over that length with that tolerance. 
I'd want to make sure it's absolutely spot on. Yeah, and it's amazing that tool and the, the, the Sammy tool, and they can, they're taking 17 mil aside, I think, which is absolutely ridiculous. Let's be honest, you tried to pick that up, and how heavy was that tool? <laughs> oh my God, yeah, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I'm not got the same biceps <laughs> that you have, especially that, that big right arm that you've got. Oh, I yeah, can't beat that. Yeah, after the, the valve <laughs> earlier, I am... Uh... Exactly. And one more thing about this machine that you found really interesting. It wasn't the spindle, <laughs> it wasn't the 90 tool tool changer. Yeah, yeah, you're quite hung up on this, aren't you? Yeah, well, it, was, it was something to do with the you, doors, Tom. Let's be honest, me and you were both in machine shops but we both use small to medium sized machines. Have you ever seen a machine you can walk in through two, not just one, two full size doors? I still have no idea why you're, why you're interested in that. Let's keep going, come on, let's move <laughs> on from these double doors. I'm getting sick of this. So Rowan, you can see just how big this building is, but can you guess what they actually used to make in here before they did valves. I've got absolutely no idea. I mean, if you look at it, it's absolutely huge. It looks like, I don't know, they could do some massive gun drilling in here for like, I don't know, oil and gas piping or something. Well, before, this was actually owned by BAE and they did made Harriers and Hawks in so here. So these are the proper jump jets. Yeah. Well, I guess that kind of makes sense why it looks like a bit of a hangar. I guess you could imagine the, the skeletons over there and then them being in, uh, coming in, in, I guess, various states of, of assembly and then you get them flying out of the other end. Maybe not quite flying out, maybe getting driven out. And then these guys moved in in 2018. Yeah, so actually, so I know a little bit from the last time I came here, uh, Paul said that they didn't have any machines on the shop floor. Do you know how long they've, been, they've had machines on the shop floor? See, I think when they moved in in 2018, they, they came as a machine shop. Actually, no, they've, they've only had machines on this, pl on this site since April of last year. I mean, and you know, it's not just simple to start a machine shop. You don't just plop a machine in and it starts making parts. Oh, There's... no, because what you've got to think is you've got to get the machinists in. You've got to get all the, all the guys skilled up. But even for the HNK, you've got to dig all the foundations for that machine to come in as well. So... It takes a hell of a long time, doesn't it? So they've, they've, they started on the ground, basically on the ground running. But it's not just the modern machines, the Huachons from Ward High Tech and the HNKs. They've also got quite a lot of the older machines as well, which are more specialist for, if you see this, we've got a, what's, do you know what this part is here? No. No, okay, this is, <laughs> I've been told this is a, a gate, uh, this is a wedge for a gate valve. So this goes inside the gate bodies we were looking at. But even on that, and even with, like you were saying, these are the old, older machines, they're still using fixtures for these as well, well aren't yeah, they? So it's, so it's a really old uh, fixture just to kick, kick a five degree up so you can use a vertical Webster Bennett uh, borer, borer machine, which these, these Webster Bennett's have been going for ages. And there's even a big radial arm drill as well yeah. there. I know that I, I saw one of those radial arm drills first time at Chester Machine Tools. I, didn't, I had no idea what it was. It's just this big beast of a machine. But they still need those to make, um, to make parts and cut really, really hard metal so the stellite welded faces on those gates. Because when you walk in and you see all just the CNC machines, you just think that's it, that's all they do. But they're still using the older machines as well. Well, the older machines, I, I've, some might suggest that the older machines are actually built almost as well as the newer machines. Well, just look at me and you. Oh, exactly, yeah, to be fair. <laughs> the older guys. The, the better model. <laughs> We've got Rowan V2 and Tom Scabala. So, so what are we doing over here? Because this looks quite an interesting place to be. So this is where we're finishing is the testing center. And obviously, when, you, when it comes to uh, critical applications in, in valve manufacture, you need to make sure those valves are not going to leak. I mean, that's, they've got one job, right? So if you see on the left here, we've got uh, one of the Hastelloy uh, castings that was machined on the H&K on the left. On the right, uh, that's the bare cast valve body. On the right, you've got it uh, assembled with some, like, some blanking flanges put on, um, and they're actually testing it right as we speak. And can you remember what bar of pressure they're actually testing that to? Yeah, so it's the same kind of bar that you get on a, quite a high-spec like, machine tool. It's 80 bars of pressure which is a hell of a lot. So these are actually going in ships. Uh, they're, they're being used as, a as part of the ballast system for ships. So you can imagine a massive ship's hull is going to be taking loads of sea, I, guess, I don't know if it's seawater or fresh water, but it's going to be taking loads of water in and then clamping, uh, clamping, uh, take the val valve down to, to keep that ballast in, to keep the ship uh, level to a certain height. I mean, I'm not a marine engineer, <laughs> but it sounds like quite a, no, but quite a honest, application. You're going to want to have got the certificate to say that's been checked I off. I mean, yeah, if I'm going to be sailing on it, or maybe, my, my, maybe your new car is going to be sailing on that, you want to make sure that ship's not going to go down. <laughs> oh, exactly, yeah. So, but it, it's great how they do it for everything here, don't they? From, they get the castings in, they machine them all up and pressure them. And that, everything's in-house. Absolutely, it's amazing. They've only been going, doing this machining, these machining tasks since April of last year, but they've been making good valves for over 200 years. Um, if you're in the oil and gas industry and you're interested, come and check out Ship and Valves. They've got some fantastic engineering knowledge, and I'm going to say thank you to Paul Morrod for his time. He's a fantastic engineer, and I'm amazed at what he's managed to do with this brilliant engineering shop.